Well, hi everyone. Welcome to the Menno Lounge. I'm Julie Gordon White, CEO of Menno Well, Menopause Energy and Protein Bars. And we're at a special time today because we have a special guest. One of my favorite midlife, I'm just going to say badasses. I mean, she is the very best. I'm going to bring her up right away. I see you here, Vonda, Dr. Vonda Wright. Her third podcaster interview today. She is everywhere all the time doing the thing. Dr. Hi. Vonda, hello, hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, I'm so glad to see you. I mean, we, we were together, I guess it was a month ago on the pause cruise. Yeah. So fun. And fun. When you hang out with somebody for five days, all, like, I miss you. Like, how are you? What's going oh, on? No. Why can't we all just live in a cul-de-sac? We could meet in the middle and I love plan it. world peace. Cul-de-sac. Okay, your volume is low. I just want to make sure it's not mine here. I'm going to oh. check it. Well, I'll hold this. It's high. Let's see. Nope, it's as high as it goes. Are you okay, good? beautiful. All right. Well, you're powerful. It will project. So if anyone doesn't know you, and I know you do know Dr. Vonda, she is a double board certified orthopedic surgeon, all things bones, ligaments, joints, tendons, all the good stuff, um, specializing in sports medicine and longevity. She's a multi-book author, podcaster, speaker, um, Spartan racer, and midlife badass. Yeah, Boom, all the things. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. Yeah. I am... I just love hanging out with you. And I have to just, I've totally been fangirling you. It's kind of weird because I know you, but, um, but watching your content, I love, love, love your new podcast, all your new episodes. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to see you in my seat over here, uh, doing the interviewing. I'm like, she already knows the answer to that question, but, um, really, really exciting. And your content is fantastic. So if you're not following Dr. Vonda's podcast. I actually love watching you. You know, I just like, I like YouTube. I'm a YouTube girl. So yeah. I was on YouTube watching. Um, so make sure you head over there. There's some great interviews, but we're talking today about being strong. Yeah. Boom. Our favorite, you and I, mm -hmm. and courageous yeah. during midlife, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, go for it. I, I know you've got a great piece of content out there. We're going to talk about how everybody can get it, but Tell us why that, that term strong and courageous lands for you. And I really want to talk about courageous, especially first, because I know we have a lot to talk about on the strong, yeah. but that whole idea of language, you and I share that language mindset is so important, especially for women in midlife and menopause. So can we start there? Yeah. You know what? Strong and courageous comes from, you know, my old Sunday school days when we would talk about be strong and courageous. Do not tremble and be afraid, right? Mm -hmm. And I find that in midlife, when, when we're going through these tumultuous hormonal changes or whether, you know, we can't see the future, which we've never been able to see the future. And yet somehow in midlife, when our future is a different kind of aging than it is, sometimes that I hear the word fear so mm -hmm. often from the mouths of the people. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of falling. I'm afraid of fracturing. I'm afraid of growing old, blah, blah, blah. And so I just thought for me, how, what is the approach, the mindset approach to midlife? Because our, our brains are influenced by what we say to uh. it. So if I go around right. all day saying, I'm afraid, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what to do about this. I don't know how I'm going to solve this. That sets us mm. up for failure yeah. and it changes us chemically. But when we say things like, I am claiming this time as strong and courageous. Right. When I reflect on my first adulthood, so I just turned 57. So I'm like, okay, I've spent 40 years in adulthood. I know, right? I've spent 40 years I love you that you said that, that you said your age. Because you know I'm all about, I'm going to be 59. Yeah. I love saying our age yeah. because we want women to know in being courageous that say your age so you can own it. We don't have to hide behind it. That's a huge oh. signal languaging to ourselves That's about right. that. Right. Uh, so. 
You know, the older, the better, frankly, because the stronger I am now at older ages, the more in awe people are. Frankly, maybe it's vanity of mine. Like, yes, I did a Spartan at 56. Why wouldn't I? Right. But what we say to ourselves matters. That's why all the gratefulness journals, that's why all the positivity stuff we do, yeah. what you say matters. So if you say, go in with the attitude of fear, that's how you're going to feel. That's how you're going to respond. That's how your physiology is going to be. But if you recognize as, I mean, I'm just giving you the account. Uh, I lived through my first adulthood. I'm about, I, I am uh, two weeks into my next adulthood. If you think back and just make a little life resume of here's all the hard shit that I did in the last 40 years. Yeah. Look at all, I mean, just do the exercise people from the time you left for college or whatever, 17, until now, list everything you've solved, yeah. who you've raised, right. what trips you've done. All your accomplishments. What yeah. you got out of. You right. know, I've been married at least once and I survived that, you know? <laughs> so uh, I've been married now as an amazing person, but what, at least once before. And give yourself credit for being strong. Oh. Pause the, right there. Give yourself credit. We're talking about being courageous in midlife. Women do not give themselves credit for all the things that we've that's accomplished. Right. We, we just think, oh, that's just what we do, or it was easy. And especially if it was oh. easy, we right. really don't give ourselves credit. But the reason why it was easy is because we had the skills, the capacity to actually do it. And that's really when we need to give ourselves credit. And you know what else is amazing about women? Not only do we have the strength, to get through it but if we don't know how to do something we will figure this shit out right right, right. i mean i didn't know how to raise a baby i figured that out <laughs> or i didn't know how to do a lot of things we are capable so we've done lot strong things before we're going to do strong things again we are going to call on the mental resilience of having figured things out to be courageous stepping forward. Yeah. I will step right. forward and courage to figure out menopause, to figure right. out midlife, to figure out my next career move, to figure out how we're going to pay for college or wh whatever. Right. But that's why I chose those words strong and courageous. And so when I wrote my little PDF that I'm giving away, because people ask me thousands of questions every day. Yeah. And I want to answer everybody but I can't answer everybody's. And so I thought, well, let me just dump my brain. The reason it's called strong and courageous. And you would think the very first thing I talk about is how to build muscle mass, which I do talk about, but not the first thing. No, the first thing is how to pivot our mindset from worshiping. I always look over my left shoulder, worshiping our youth. We've talked about this mm. where we're like, Oh my God, 25 was so amazing. Well, it was okay. Uh, but it, but I owed a lot of money. I wasn't done with school. I still called my mom to write checks. I didn't know myself. That's it. Right. No confidence. Right, right, right. I didn't right. know myself well enough. And I didn't have my F this attitude that I really actually do now. I mean, I don't give a flying rat's ass who does or doesn't want me to do something because I have figured this right. life out. So, you know who you are. You, right. We don't know who we are at 25. And that's part of the journey. I have a 25 year old daughter. You have a young yes. daughter. You know, they're figuring it out yes. and, and they do care about what other people think. That's that journey. But right now we're like, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm fine with my decisions. Right. And, and so. So that is the attitude going forward. And someone said, just said, I struggle with so much confidence. Well, you know what? Let's build that confidence resilience by just taking one little step. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow you speak up in a way you never would have before mm -hmm. and you'll gain that confidence or you do something you've never done before. I wasn't confident when I signed up for this Spartan obstacle hoo-ha that I did. And now that I did again, and now that I'm doing again in May that I could get over uh, a six foot, eight foot, wall or any of the other things. And you and I are like pocket size. So tiny. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I figured it out. I outsmarted the obstacle. That's right. just what we do. Strategy. Yeah. Strategy, right? That's the That's whole right. thing. Well
this is what I love and why you, know, you and I are so in sync, because when I started Mental Well, it was really about bringing empowerment to menopause mm -hmm. through nutrition. And, you know, we have a whole manifesta and, and the, you know, the mm -hmm. essence of it is to believe that the best is yet to come. And the key word is belief because we know, you know, aging is a blessing. It's a gift. Yeah. Thank you. The opposite is not so good. Not great. Um, but we have to start if we have, if we are fortunate enough to be blessed to continue to age, then we should, we need to choose this word believe that yeah. things can be fantastic and all new things are available for us. And if we don't believe it, then that's when we get stuck and then we have to and fall and do all the things and then you have to do surgery on us. But believe and then confidence comes from action i think a lot of times we think women are just be courageous well like where do you get it from right. this is something i talk to my kids about and especially i have two sons and a daughter but confidence comes from taking the first little step right. right and you don't it's like martin luther king says faith is taking the first step when you don't know where the staircase leads and that's that's where confidence comes from is, is starting and in midlife we have to we have to take some new steps and sometimes it feels uncomfortable yeah i like that word better than scary i don't know what do you think about that uncomfortable because we're used to, we like being comfortable just as a society i th think that that is a better word because scary is like friday the 13th right <laughs> right right uncomfortable right <laughs> yeah no one's trying to kill us but time will time and inactivity will kill us you know so you know apply that lens right, right? Yikes. That's scary. That's now that's real, that's scary. scary. That's, scary. that's yeah. really scary. That's Friday the 13th. Right. But uncomfortable just means uh, I haven't done it before. And I, you know, the lens I use, and I use this lens as a doctor, and I don't say it lightly, but what is the worst thing that's going to happen if we take the next step or step into our courage a little at a time in most likelihood? we're not gonna die. Right. Embarrassment never killed anybody. I mean, I have embarrassing stories, let me tell you. I'm still- We all do. Okay. So we, we, sometimes we're frozen by uh, uh, being uncomfortable with the unknown, being uncomfortable with not knowing the, the end game. But Which is all that. perceived, right? Yeah. It's all made up because it's in the future anyway, it hasn't happened, so we can just- Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And and I think women forget that we need to, this is a, a journey. This is a practice like yoga. Mm -hmm. We need to always practice expanding our experience, the things that we try and mm -hmm. and tackle, if you will, because mm -hmm. it, it never it never ends. There's yeah. certain things that we master. That's the gift yeah. of, of age and wisdom. Yeah. But if we want to continue to grow and expand and have joy, then we have to put ourselves in places that stretch us like a little rubber band and the cool yeah. thing is rubber bands usually you stretch them far enough they don't really go back like you just build that more <laughs> capacity for all of that so yeah it's really good i, I love it I, i'm right there with you because i think having that courageous mindset that you yeah. talk about sets us up especially mm -hmm. in midlife menopause yeah. because we really have to be courageous and the body's like uh <laughs> It's doing whatever it's doing. What yeah. the heck? Yeah. And so when we're courageous, that helps us move over to strong, right? So let's yeah. talk about strong. And I watched your um, interview with Dr. Stacy Sims. Mm. Fire, fire, fire. It was so good. So good. good. Like fire in a good way. That's my, yeah. my, you know, my kids say, mom, that's fire. Oh. So let's talk about strong. Tell us about your philosophy, what yeah. strong means to you, and then we, maybe we can talk about some of the myths and some tips from there. Well, well, several people, as we have been talking, because they recognize that you've developed this great brand, which I eat all the time. I've posted trying to find mental bars. The best there. videos, like your blueberry, yeah. like, where's my blueberry? Where's my that is, I, we, I, still, I still have a smile on my face every time I think about it. <laughs> so cute. But they keep commenting about one of the things that they're uncomfortable about is their meno belly and the and the and the 30 pounds that I gained and then lost and and I get that everybody hates that the thing that has gotten me through that is getting strong mm -hmm. because when we simply 
say, okay, I'm going to resort to whatever the magazines say to do and whatever I've done before, which is just starve ourselves. Starve ourselves. Starve ourselves. Right. ourselves and and do too much enough, cardio. Right. right. Too much cardio, starve ourselves, do not eat enough protein and fiber. What we do is we lose equal amounts of fat, equal amounts of muscle, it slows down our, our metabolism, and then we just get in this vicious circle. The way I totally recomposed my meno body was by getting really strong. And what happened is the muscle, because it's metabolically more active, burns more calories. So my I gained 30 pounds. I only, when I recomposed my body, I gained eight pounds of muscle. Yes. And I lost 12% body fat. I only lost 18 of the 30 because I gained eight pounds of muscle. Do you see? Right, which is what so, we want. We, we talk about we losing want. weight. We're always worried. And that's honestly, that's where I started with Men of Well. I gained that 10 plus pounds around the middle at 5'1". Not good. Um, and then I realized I was focused on losing that. But then I learned, right, about how important weights are and muscle. And because yeah. when you just reduce your calories only, then if you don't put that muscle on, then right. as soon as you just eat the, the same thing, you gain weight because your body's not working as hard anymore because you lost the muscle and that metabolic, uh, the thermogenic effect of muscle. That's right. right. That's so, right. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so, and plus, didn't you lose hard. inches too? Oh my God. How about your inches? Well, that's right. The point. Oh my yeah. God. I'm an off the rack two to four. I'm a little person. I, I mean, I'm not saying I earned that. I was born. You earned it. Okay. So, okay, but still. But, yeah. So I may weigh more, but because I'm leaner, all those clothes that I don't have two closets. I just right. reverted back to whatever I had before menopause. And I don't I don't say that, ladies who are listening, in any kind of way, except can we please focus on what's gonna make us strong, powerful, and live longer, which is muscle. And it's not overwhelmingly hard and don't worry lifting up some metal which i'm happy to explain to you how to do is not going to make you look like a competition physique athlete unless that's what you want right and e i mean even if you do want to look that way it's still super hard you have to eat a specific way lift a yeah. specific way yeah. so <laughs> most 90 percent of us will struggle to ever look like a bodybuilder so we can just let that go because let it, let what you go. have to do to get there is extremely complicated it is it's not it's, just it's, an, it's, it's an not why i lifted no. 10 pound dumbbells like no way no yeah way. it's an it's occupation not. almost it's almost yes. like an occupation yes, it is yeah. full-time job that's a great way it's an occupation <laughs> to become I know some amazing women in their 60s who are bodybuilders and um, enter, um, you know, like the beauty, con not beauty, body contests. I'm, yes. I'm that. And they are amazing. And what they do, they have multiple trainers. They have um, somebody who helps them with their food on, on, on. So yes. it is, so we can just set that aside. Right. Because always, well, I'm going to get too bulky. No. Unless you want, unless you want to. Unless you want to. Yeah. But, exactly. Okay, so where do women start? Let's let's act as if they're beginners and then like the beginner and immediate and then advanced kind of yeah. things. Because I, I do believe, especially in this menopause midlife conversation, we need to meet women where they are. You and I talk about menopause like drinking water and but other people are still other women are still very uncomfortable with that. So same thing about lifting heavy. So let's just meet them where they are and then kind of progress through what do you think so if if you truly and there is no shame if you're raising your hand saying you know what i have been taking care of everybody for the last 30 years and i've not taken care of myself and i don't know how to do it and i barely walk i yeah. get in my car go to my work come home pick up everybody else it's okay right. no one is actually judging that no that's what women do. right right if that is what's going on for seven days i just want you to commit after dinner to getting up and going taking a walk because that is going to settle your blood sugar you are going to push the sugar from your dinner into your muscles and you are not going to spike and you're going to feel different and you're going to feel like oh my god i committed to myself for seven days right and that may be a new thing right because you're taking care of everybody else now 
you're devoting 45 minutes to yourself. After you do that for seven days, if you've truly not done things, you get to, you need to get your know your body. So you can start with simple calisthenics. You can, you know, pick up one of my first two books, Fitness After 40. I'm looking at them up on yeah. my shelf. Fitness After 40 or Guide to Thrive, which have functional body weight exercises, light bands, some kettlebells with pictures of me and my husband demonstrating. I love I know. it. I love it. Yeah. And, or there are lots of resources, but start with simple body weight. Once you've done that for several months, and I'm going to tell you for sure, you're going to feel different in three weeks. If you can walk for seven days, commit for three weeks, you're going to feel different and you're not going to want to go back. And can I say something about walking? Because you, know, you, you live in a warm location. I live on the other coast. We're on opposite coast. Yeah. So we have the, the more calm climate. Mm -hmm. But for folks in the middle who are dealing with snow mm -hmm. and heavy rain and on, 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 don't be afraid to walk inside. I have been known to walk a 5K in a hotel room once. Okay, oh call God. me nuts. <laughs> But I heard somebody else talk about that. And I just happened to be in a place and that I didn't want to go to the hotel gym because I was by myself and it was at night and that's just a no for me. Mm -hmm. um, but in your room, right? Like in your house, yep. stairs up, down. So really, you know, don't cheat yourself because maybe you're stuck in the house. Just walk around. And yeah. if your family thinks you're weird, remember we're not worried about it anymore. Yeah, so, okay. All right. I or, want to say that. Yeah. In the mid, in the Midwest where I'm from, we typically have an upstairs and a basement. If you have that, that's three flights of right. stairs. Just keep going. Right. <laughs> there you go. So once you get to recognize how your body moves and want to lift up some weights. Starting where you are, I want you to start lifting your heavy. Okay. I don't want you to waste okay. your time. heavy. Your I love that. Heavy. Lift your heavy. Beautiful. Yep. Because when I say lift heavy, then all the questions are, what? How mm -hmm. much do you lift, Fonda? What do you want? Your heavy means what. You you can lift four times Great. for four sets. So for instance, yes. you've so four, probably seen four, enough four, videos. Four, four. four and four. You've probably seen enough videos. Everybody can figure out how to do a biceps curl, right? Here's an example that I use all the time. I can biceps curl 15 pounds until tomorrow morning. It does not challenge my muscles. But when I pick up Fit 25, I can only do four mm. without like throwing my whole hip into it, right? right. Which is bad. Right. That's what I mean. That's my heavy. For some people out there, that is a cakewalk. So, and you're going to- And no judgment if your heavy is three pounds. Oh. And I know how you feel about the Mamsy Pamsy oh. Pink uh, dumbbells. Oh, I do hate Mamsy Pamsy Pink dumbbells because they're one pound. Ladies, yes. if we can only pick up one pound, we're frail. We and picked we, up groceries heavier than that, kids no, heavier than that. Come on, I mean. ladies. The like, coffee don't be can afraid. Is more, yeah, the coffee can is more than one pound. <laughs> so, you know, don't be, a, don't be afraid. We've talked about that. So if, if I think this is a good time, if you're new to the gym, yeah. to invest in your health by hiring someone to teach yeah. you. You don't have to hire them for nine months. Say, I need 10 sessions. Teach me how to use this machine. Teach me how to lift this weight so I don't hurt something. Right. So that you can be independent, right? I like that a lot because if you just hire, first of all, it's an investment, right? It's an investment. So let's, let's go back to our language. You're investing in years on your life when you bring in somebody who can show you how to lift properly because you don't want to have to, but maybe you do, but go see Dr. Vonda because you're not, you know, you did something not so good to yourself. So invest so you can lift properly. Right. And that's, that's usually, you know, three to four sessions and then you're, you're good, good to go. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. And then you can find, you can either make it up yourself, good online programs, which are not that expensive. There are lots of good ones that, uh, from people we interact with on, yeah. uh, through frankly, Instagram, they all reach out and like, that's a cool program. Yeah, cool there's program. a lot. But there's a lot. Feisty, yeah, Feisty Menopause right now has a whole program called Strong to teach people how to lift. You can right. go do that. But 
I, I want to, before I leave the thought of investment, you can use your health savings account if you have one to do this, right? You could do that. You could save up $7.18 a morning, which is what the Starbucks drink I like costs, which I don't go get anymore. I just do it at my house for, you know, for, for a month and have what you need. It's all about what's important to us. Yeah. It's also, you know, what we think of self-care as only things like a massage or a facial or right. something. And that's fine. But once in a while, we got to get a little sweaty. So self-care is also self-health, mm, self-health, which might mean taking that money and getting a trainer. So it's just a thought. And don't get me started on how many purses we have in the closet that oh. we think are going to make us feel and better. Shoes. And, and shoes. And shoes. Okay, no, I, I may know. have a, a boot problem. I know. <laughs> I'm a shoe girl, so okay. But I don't but, do, I don't buy shoes to at the sacrifice of my health. I correct. Do not, right? It does not exactly. replace self-help. Right. That's <laughs> the thing. So I love that. Remember, we are investing in ourselves. So if you go see Dr. Vonda, and we're going to talk about her upcoming uh, event, yeah. it's an investment. And I love that you reminded everybody that they might be able to use if they have a uh, health account set aside. But invest in your health and add years onto your life. Okay, so now we have started where we are, body weights. Now we are doing four sets of four. And I, I'm trying to see all the questions going by yeah. quickly. And even somebody said, you know, 10 sets of 10. But no. remember, Dr. Rhonda says four no. sets of four because then you can lift heavier, right? Because I think as women, we, we think about all these reps, like lower weights, lots of reps. But then we just wear ourselves. Now you're kind of doing cardio. So well, you're that. welcome to come into my weekend warrior clinic after you do 10 sets of 10. The 10 sets of 10 is a very popular thing right now in the meathead gym community because it was it's ancient. Yeah. It's from it's an ancient German technique. It went away. It's come back recently. The science shows I'm not making this up. Uh, if you follow Stacy Sims, she talks about it all the time. The science shows that for women in midlife to build muscle, to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, to stimulate our stem cells, we must lift heavy enough to do that. You Listen. cannot lift heavy enough if we're doing 10 by 10. Listen to that. Listen, listen, listen. It's almost about having the discipline not to go beyond four because if you go beyond four that's an indicator that you're not lifting heavy enough yeah. correct yeah okay this so someone on mcgill is saying it, and it's good to vary your weight so let me clarify on what i do i'll just tell you what i did yesterday there are four compound lifts that we lift four times four mm -hmm. two upper body two lower body there's a really heavy Heavy arm push, so some kind of bench press, bench whether press, it's actual bar, press, bench press, right, right or, or it's barbells, heavy bench press. There is a pull with your arms, whether it's rowing or those are the two compound motions. Mm -hmm. For your lower body, it is a squat or a deadlift motion. Those are the primary, very compound motions. Yes, and then you vary by adding the lifts that support that. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if I'm doing bench press day, I do four by four, which is the heavy, and then everything that supports that, biceps, triceps, uh, delts, um, rows. I know you can't see me, I'm demonstrating. You, are you doing it? Rows. <laughs> Try, <laughs> Not tricep extend. Rows. Um, rows or rows, um, I do eight times four. So the accessory lifts, we can do a little lighter, but only eight, not 15, not four sets of 20. So that's how it goes. And that is what is supported in midlife in the literature. I love it. And it's what what Dr. Stacy says is, um, you know, we're not small men. So you have to be right. really careful about what we read and who we follow because we're not men. We're not small men. 
we're right. different. And especially in the stages of menopause, whether you're perimenopause or postmenopause, it's going to be different. So we really have to pay attention to the nuances. So make sure you're listening to all the, yeah. the you know, the women who know, the women yeah. who are. It's, it's really important because we are different. Mm -hmm. um, uh, okay, so I love that. All right, so let's talk about, so we've, we're lifting now, we're going forward, we're progressing, we're adding weight over time, progressive, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and we're getting overload. stronger, mm -hmm. overloading, yep. we're getting stronger and stronger, which is so fabulous. We're building up our metabolism so we can eat more, which we have to eat more to support all of that. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you won't have the energy which is food, in yep. order to lift. So it all goes together. We're burning more fat. Let's and it talk makes about the brain better. And it, it makes, makes our brain, brain better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Brain yeah. fog. Hello. It, it makes our brain better. Too. So zone two. Yeah. So those of you are here who are following all the conversations now about not doing Tabata, you know, or, or hit all those things that create stress in our midlife bodies and cortisol, which is not really our friend unless we are actually running from a saber tooth tiger or something like that. Yeah. Um, but there's sort of this thing, this controversy now about zone two, which I, and zone two is steady state. So 30 to 40 minutes, which I happen to love. Um, I love, I have a cycle bike in my office right over here and I love it. It just, it does, it, it drops those endorphins for me. I feel mm -hmm. so good and I do burn a lot of fat doing that. Mm -hmm. So um, what do you think about that? I know there's some like, eh, we're doing too much, so even zone two now. So what do you think? So ask yourself, what your goal is, right? Ladies, ask yourself why you're burning every single day. Why are you killing yourself in hit classes six days a week? Ask yourself, what is the goal? If your goal is longevity and cardiovascular health and metabolic optimization, then I'm gonna ask you to do what the pros do. And I'm a, I'm a, orthopedic sports doctor from the best places in the country, I've had the privilege of taking care of really elite athletes. They do 80% of their training at baseline, meaning lower heart rate. Yeah. Now it takes a lot of work for them to some of them because they're in such good shape. But for us mere mortals, it's either come to me and I'll do a lactate threshold and I'll tell you at what point you switch from burning fat to burning to burning carbs but if you don't come to me then it's 181 minus your age about yeah, yeah. so 120 to 130 45 minutes three hours a week but that's not the end of the story what that does for you is makes you metabolically more flexible meaning able to move back and forth from burning fat to carbs easily without carb spikes it makes you grow more mitochondria which are the energy powerhouses in your body right. plus it doesn't wear you out with high levels of just exhaustion and cortisol and injury right, right? And recovery that's after because that's what used to happen to me my recovery yeah. was just so long and uncomfortable oh so. yeah yeah mm -hmm. So it's very little recovery. I feel great after I do that. I yeah. mean, and it's not like I don't break a sweat. Toward, uh, you guys have seen me walking on this treadmill doing zone two. I'm sweating. Yeah. But then twice a week, research-based, we need to do maximum effort. So I say sprinting and people freak out. Because right. they're like, like I can't sprint. <laughs> well, I don't know what you if you would call if you saw me doing it. Sprinting, it's certainly not like, Richardson or or Bolt, those You're sprinters, not, but not on a track like <laughs> running as hard as you can around. The I I feel like I look like them, but I don't. <laughs> but what it means is I am giving maximum effort for thirty seconds. Right. So I'm doing my thing. I'm doing my zone two. I get done. I'm totally warm. I punch up the treadmill to eleven. Yeah. When then I'm tr trying not to fly <laughs> off the back. I was of gonna it. say, hold on, sister. I'm <laughs> hard but only for 30 seconds right it's right. enough stress that it stimulates metabolic pathways and nerve pathways yeah. after 30 seconds i totally recover right. and i do that four times mm -hmm. so and totally recover can mean that's minutes that's not is. just like 
three minutes or so it takes me to get my heart rate back down to 130 or so. And then, and, and so that's what we mean by, by you still need to sprint, but not every single frigging day. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. I, and I'm a bike person. I used to be a runner. I still love running, but you can talk. I love having my, bike. Yeah. I love my, my bike. Yeah. And so, and it's not even the fancy one. It's one I got on Amazon, yeah. you know, less than $200, yeah, but I love it. And so I will do my sprinting. I just crank yeah. it all the way up, yeah. turn up whatever music. Music is huge, by the way. Yeah. If you're, you know, whether it's steady state or doing your your sprint, find those things, make that playlist yeah. that really gets you going or has the right cadence for you. That really mm -hmm. makes the time go by fast too. So I get those songs and just you know go at it. And so that that's my totally. way of doing it yeah. without going outside most of the time. Completely um, right. Yeah. Completely right. Yeah. Super good. Uh, okay. So we're not going to talk about food today. Um, but you know, nutrition is important. It's a huge component, you know, yeah. and I love that you're a, th you have a 360 degree perspective. Maybe you can come back on and we can talk about yeah. how food relates to all of being confident, courageous, strong, yeah. um, and all the things. But I do want to answer one question that somebody said, can you talk about frozen frozen shoulder and menopause because that is a huge issue symptom that women yeah. don't even know and when you have one of the best orthopedic surgeons right here on the mental yeah. we're gonna ask that Aww. question so good so here, here's the bottom line about frozen shoulder when we are inflamed our uh we will get a frozen shoulder how do we get inflamed several ways we can be highly stressed out and highly inflamed and cortisol everywhere, number one. Number two, we can be too sweet. We can be eating lots of simple sugar, not enough fiber. We can be, frankly, uh, either really sweet or, frankly, diabetic. And mm -hmm. what that does is sugar cross-links, literally, I'm getting a little science-y, it cross-links all your collagen in your body and makes it stiff. Mm. You can also get frozen. So diabetics get a lot of frozen shoulder. But pertinent to our conversation, women who have lost their estrogen are highly inflamed because estrogen has an anti-inflammatory effect and interacts with our immune system to keep our inflammation down. And once she's gone, everything gets hot, baby, including, I know, including our soft tissues. So frozen shoulder is when you wake up, you did nothing, you did not hit your shoulder against the door in the middle of the night, and you can't move it. And you certainly can't reach behind your body and hook your bra. And it hurts like all get out. And you're thinking, what did I like do? Well, right. nothing happened. You are inflamed from uh, losing your estrogen. And this is just one of the places it focuses on. And so what do you do about it? Number one, recognize it. Number two, do not wait to start moving mm -hmm. it. it. Even if it's painful to move, gently help it if you have to. Move it through a range of motion. Because the longer you protect it like this, I'm literally doing what women do. They right. crunch their shoulder up. Within one week, you will have no motion. Mm. You'll come in unable to raise your arm. Keep it moving. Go to a physical therapist if you can. Um, anti-inflame, evaluate what you're eating, find the sugar source that's making it worse. If you are not on HT, please evaluate if that's a choice you want to make for yourself. Do not make that decision out of fear. Right. You know, I, I say this every day. I love these people. Read Estrogen Matters, for God's sake. Yes. It's a book that changed my the life. Bible. The Bible. It is the Bible of estrogen um, data. Read it. You deserve to know. Yeah. And so, so you can make an informed decision, to. right? Because yeah. your doctor, other than Dr. Vonda, your regular doctor, probably, they, know. they don't know. They, they don't, don't know. know. Then go get some help. Go to therapy. Go to your orthopedic surgeon. The average orthopedic surgeon is going to offer you a, a steroid injection. In this case, it's I, I do offer it. I don't love steroids, but I do offer it. It's so painful. So keep, keep moving. In my clinic, I also, when we just can't get people past, I offer them platelet-rich plasma, which is your own growth factor that I take from your blood. 
And it has a huge anti-inflammatory effect mm -hmm. because what mm -hmm. I'm trying to avoid is taking you to the operating right. room to manipulate it. I'm trying to avoid that. That's a whole, whole nother level right there. So, yeah. and, and there's so many things that women can do because they don't realize that it is a symptom of menopause and they think yes. it's an injury or something else. And if yeah. their doctor doesn't know that it potentially is a symptom of menopause, they may go to that elevated option versus let's, let's start with your food. Yeah. Let's take out some some of that sugar, right? Let's add more fiber. Don't get me started on fiber. You know, yeah, I think fiber yeah. is our BFF. Yeah. And, um, and then all the other things and work your way up from that lens yeah. versus let's go straight to something a lot more uh, difficult to recover from and invasive. Yeah. So, okay. So good. You know, I could keep you all day, but <laughs> you have things to do. I don't know. Is this like your fifth interview today? <laughs> it was a good day. People a good day. Are, you know, it just, the stars collided. I had time today. So, <laughs> Perfect. I know. So you're like, let's stack it up. I know yeah. you've done uh, mind, body, green, all the good things. So, yeah. All right. So where can we find yeah. all things Dr. Vonda, including how do how do women sign up for your event for coming retreat, up? Which there will right. be men of well bars there. Oh my gosh. For sure. You, you guys fed my last retreat. And do you know what, Julie? So I gave out these gorgeous purple gift bags. I don't have any here. And men of well was inside. Do you know I came back into the conference room and they're trading it? They're trading it like uh, like money. They're like, I'll take two orange for your pink. It was adorable. I love it. it. Adorable. Yeah. I love it. So um, so here's how you find me. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Dr. Vonda Wright, Dr. Vonda Wright. And I post m almost every day. Sometimes it's funny. Today I I posted my little my bone cell. I saw that. I'm gonna share that on funny. my story. I, I thought That's it was so great. Funny. But I post real information as well as uh, uh, inspiration. Find me there. In my bio, the link tree. There's a link to everything. My YouTube page, which has so many videos, exercise videos, past conferences. It has my keynotes. It just has so much great information. You should go to YouTube and sign up. The other thing I have as a free resource right now on Instagram is Strong and Courageous, the PDF. Get right so you get it right yeah. after this. It go is get it. It, it. it should have a price tag. That's what I'm just going to say. It's a real, it's a book. So go get it before she starts charging well, for it. It is yeah, phenomenal. Go get it. Go get it. It's, you know, it's a 30 page mind dump really yeah, so good. yeah and then finally uh who doesn't want their purple gift bag filled with everything including mena well so i do retreats four times a year called midlife mastery because i think our middle life is menopause but it's so much more yeah so we teach you about menopause and you know amazing people experts in the field that i'll announce soon will be there but we also teach you how to lift. We measure your lactate threshold. We, we measure your biomarkers of aging so that you know how old you are inside. I bring this amazing speaker named Juliana Hauser, who's a PhD family counselor mm -hmm. to talk about friends and lovers. Mm -hmm. How do our relationships change? Mm -hmm. And so every woman is equipped with her own midlife mastery plan. And I know because I see what goes on on. You're not going to get that at any other retreat. So I proudly say, come to Lake Nona. We're going to treat you like royalty. And, and do you know what my group of women do? Hmm. They have an Instagram chat. They talk to each other every day, whether I'm on that chat or not. They have built a community, which is so meaningful because they, they came alone. And now yeah. they have 30 more friends. I love it. And so when is the next retreat, Fonda? It is May 16 to 19, and you know we've expanded it. So uh, on Saturday of this retreat, Thursday we're together, or Friday we're together, Sunday we're together, Saturday I give two options. You can Spartan or spa. <laughs> you want to go to the spa, That's perfect. we'll take you to the spa. Those of you who want to come with me to do a Spartan race, I'm going to take you to a Spartan is, race. Is there, so, is there, can I, can I do both? Can I, can I Spartan in the morning and spawn in the afternoon? I want all the things. We would work it out <laughs> for you, my friend. So you it. can sign up for that on, in, in, on Instagram, or you can email me. You can find me. I'm on the internet. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
Dr. Vonda, thank you for all you are doing. You thank have you. such a unique lens that you are bringing to this menopause midlife conversation. Um, it's just, it's so important and it's, it's about lifting heavy. It's about being courageous, but it's about the core of who we are comes from our bones, from our skeleton and, you know, the thing that carries us around every day, which I really, really love and respect that perspective. So thank you for all you do and showing up on Instagram in between all your patients yeah. and like all the stuff. Thanks for having me. I miss I you. I miss you too. I can't wait to see you in person. Yeah might see me in May, I'm just saying. Um, okay. You know, the bars will be there. So if you go to Dr. Vonda's, you'll be getting all the Menowell bars. So because you've got to get your fiber and your maca and all the good things. Yep. Um, so thanks for being here. There's going to be some great reels that we're going to post from this so you can get all the bite-sized things. So follow Dr. Vonda if you aren't already. Follow us at My Menowell, and we will see everyone next time. Oh, one more question. What does being... Let me say this again. What does Meno Well mean to you? Oh, it means being Meno Well means being strong and courageous in the best years of my life. There you go. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Be well, everybody. See you next time. Thanks so much Bye. for being here. Bye, Dr. Bonda. Bye. Bye.